Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Krompiatek from Coley at Canisius College. In this video, we will give a brief overview of D2L groups. Oftentimes, your professor may want to split you into groups to work on various assignments. You could be put into a group and the professor may notify you what group you are in, as well as your group members. Or the professor may use D2L's randomization options to put you into various groups. For some assignments, you may only be able to interact with other group members and in others, you may be able to interact with the entire course. In any case, it may be important to see who is in your group. I'm currently in a demonstrated course. To see what group I am in, I can go to the My Tools option all the way to the far right. When I click on that, a drop-down window will appear, and one of the options is Groups. Clicking on that will take me to this web page, which tells me what groups I am in. Is broken up into categories. There is only one category here right now. It's called mode. And below that, I can see I am part of the face to face group. I can see the number of group members in this column as well. The number is two. This number right here is actually a hyperlink which will open up a pop up window. And I can see myself and the other group members, which there's only one other group member. This list is in alphabetical order by last name, and I can click on last name, and that will change it. I can also click on first name, username, and so on. I'll hit close for right now. From here, I can also see if there are any group drop boxes, discussions, or even a group locker. These links are also hyperlinks to similar pop-up windows, except they will tell me the names of the Dropbox folders or the discussions. The locker is basically a file repository, very similar to Google Drive. Some professors may not set this up and may even prefer that you use your Google Drive and share files or folders with them. This is especially because, and we'll take a look at this now, the locker has a very limited amount of space, which is maybe five photos, and you also have a personal locker. As you can see, one photo is taking up 99% of the space that I have. Let's go back to my groups page. I'll click on my tools again and go to groups. From here, I can also email the group. I can click on this little icon right here, and this will open up another pop up window that I can email my group members. For right now, I'll hit cancel. That pop up window can be very buggy, so sometimes it might just be easier to go to the class list, find your groups in the class list, and grab the emails from there and email your group members using Gmail. So I'll show you that now. I'll go to class list. and go to students. As you can see, we have a full class list, but we don't want to necessarily email everyone in the class. So I can go to view by, click on user, and choose groups. Then I can hit the gray apply button to the right. The page will reload, and now I can see different groups. I'm obviously in the face-to-face -face group, but if I click on this little drop down right here, I can select mode, which is the category which has all the students in it, face to face or online. I'll just leave it on face to face right now. I can select the checkbox to the left of image, and this will select every single group member. And then I can click on email. Again, you get this pop up. But as I said, that window might be a little buggy and it might be useful to collect the email addresses here. Let's go back to the group page. Again, we can see that the professor in this course has set up a Dropbox and a discussion board. So let's take a look first at the Dropbox. Here, I can see which Dropboxes are group Dropboxes and which are not, even without the professor being explicit, as they are here. This symbol right here means that it's a group Dropbox. Any Dropbox without that symbol means that it's an individual Dropbox, that every student has to put an assignment into it 
whereas this Dropbox, depending on how the professor has set it up, only requires one single member to upload a file to the Dropbox for the entire group. Let's take a look at the discussion boards now. Similarly to the Dropbox, uh, discussion boards also have that symbol, and even here, they go a little bit further to say group or section restrictions apply here. Again, depending on how your professor has it set up, you might only be able to uh, interact with other members of your, of your group or interact with the entire class, depending on how it is set up. Of course, for both of these, your professor may have also put these into your content area. As you can see, even though test here and test two here are both group discussion boards, the professor has to explicitly say that these are group discussion boards because that symbol from earlier with the uh, the three people is not appearing here. And same thing with the Dropboxes. I've got this group Dropbox right here and this test one Dropbox right here. Keep in mind that if you are unsure as to what is or is not a group assignment, that you either read the instructions for the assignment carefully or email your professor promptly so that there is no confusion later on. If you need help navigating D2L, you can select the card above, which will give you a quick tour of around D2L. Or you can click on the D2L self-paced training icon in the D2L home area, which will take you to some tutorials to help you with D2L. That is it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at helpdesk at Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.